Welcome back, True Seeker. April 1st, a Friday. Just want to say congrats to all the big winners last night. It was another very successful Thursday. And again, typically it's 35 Thursday. The 35 definitely played last night, but there weren't a lot of 35s on the board. Again, like I teach my community, if the 35's not there and the 46 is, that's the number on Thursday. It's usually 35 Thursday, but the next best number is 46. And we'll just take a look at how the 46s and 35s did last night in the NBA and NHL. And then we'll talk about Xavier winning the NIT, which was a no-brainer. The Jesuit program with so much focus around it in Cincinnati in light of the Bengals just being in the Super Bowl in light of what I showed about the upcoming Who concert that's going to be there May 15th. Again, a lot of people won with Xavier last night. A lot of people won with the Thursday rituals. Congrats to all of you. And again, in Gematria, Thursday's 35 in the most pure cipher. When you just flip the alphabetic order around and run it in reverse with numerology, Thursday's 46. And just to scan through the NBA, you notice the 76ers got upset last night, staying on 46 wins on a Thursday. Pistons also stayed on 56 losses on a date with 56 numerology. That's the Society of Jesus number. Again, it's the Catholics and Jesuits that run the whole show. That's why you can't go against Xavier on a Thursday, the Jesuit program out of Cincinnati. But scanning along, you can see the Cavs picked up their 35th loss of the season on a Thursday. Scanning along. You know, that this isn't a this isn't a Thursday thing, but this is just understanding Gematria. You see how the Clippers stayed on 37 wins against Chicago? Again, if there's not a 35 or 46 there, if you know the language of Gematria, things like this are easy to spot. Los Angeles is 37 in the most pure cipher. So is Chicago. Okay? So they stay on 37 wins in Chicago. Clockwork. Again, Gematria. Very simple. Alphabetic order, forwards and backwards. And, of course, the Jazz pick up their 46th win over the Lakers. So the Thursday numbers were flawless in the NBA. Every single game came through. And again, these are the kind of days where you can turn a small bill into a big bill. That's why Thursday is my favorite day of the week for gambling. And in the NHL, th things were pretty over here too. Things were pretty over here too. Let's get back to the Thursday games. So, scrolling through the Panthers, they picked up their 46th win of the season. 46 and um, scrolling through, scrolling through, I swear there was a, there was a, some more games here. Maybe that was it in the NHL. Maybe it was just the one. I could have sworn there was another game though. Maybe it was just the one in the NHL. Could have sworn there were two. Anyhow. Anyhow, every single Thursday Thursday riddle on the board came through on this Thursday. And some weeks it'll be like that. Some weeks it'll be flawless. You'll hit in every single Thursday game. Had you made a straight bet on all these Thursday games, you would have hit. In the last few weeks, had you made a straight bet on every Thursday game, you would have hit on the majority and you would have hit on some big upsets so you would have come ahead. And like I said, it's not... It, 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 Thursday plays almost every Thursday, but there are some weeks where... You're just like, what happened this week? <laughs> like, well, what happened to the Thursday rituals this week? And, and again, that's why you never bet your house. But again, if you just stay with this Thursday model, just week after week, it's a winner. Week after week, it's a winner. You might hit 15 straight Thursday weeks. And then in that, for whatever reason, in that 16th week, the majority of the thir Thursday riddles fail. And, and maybe even the next week. It seems like sometimes when it fails, then the next week, sometimes you're in trouble too. But it, I, I don't think I've ever seen the Thursday rituals fail three weeks in a row. And then they're back on track. And then you're winning and winning and winning again. And, and the weeks they don't come through, I, I, you know, it just leaves me scratching my head. But the point is, gambling, it's a game of averages. You go where the averages are in your favor. And with the Thursday riddles, they're in your favor the vast majority of weeks. Now let's talk about Xavier. Again, the Jesuit program out of Cincinnati winning the NIT. And they're saying this is going to be the last NIT championship in Madison Square Garden. Uh, a tradition that's gone on since 1938. M maybe the last one ever. They said they might bring it back in the future. But it's funny that they did it with the 84th NIT championship. 
um, again, just such a significant number, 84. Just, just to go back and remind you what just happened in Peacock Day. Again, our base ciphers, the alphabetic order. If you write out Peacock Day, it's 84, happened to fall on the 84th day of the year. Jesuits, 84. The Jesuit school, St. Peter's Peacocks. They got their last win of the season on Peacock Day. Of course, their run started on St. Patrick's Day. And every year, I'm telling you, these tournaments are all Catholic Jesuit. The rituals are so clear. But remember what was messed up. Um, El Nardo Julian Webster, whose name is 84 in the most peer, he died 16 days after his birthday. He's the greatest player in Peacock's history. He died March 22nd, three days before the Peacocks got their win on March 25th, their last win of the season. He died 16 days after his own birthday, three days before his team wins in the Sweet 16. And... Um, Again, being a Jesuit program, he was drafted in the NBA with the 54th pick overall. While he's talking about the Jesuit order in 54, John Carroll, 54, established Georgetown while he was 54 years old, the nation's first Jesuit university, who competed in the first March Madness, losing to the Catholic school Villanova back in 85. In that most pure cipher, Jesus Hominum Salvatore is 85. You know, the first March Madness in 85, not to mention in the most simple cipher, basketball, when spelled correctly, is 85. And not to mention the Pope's 85 right now. And, and again, Xavier, Francis Xavier, he's the right now the first Jesuit Pope, Pope Francis, who's 85. But Francis Xavier's number two in Jesuit history. Ignatius of Loyola is the founder. His right hand man was Francis Xavier, number two in command. And um, the other thing I wanted to say is this year, El Nardo Webster died on March 22nd, 322. Just like how the Jesuit Adam Weishaupt once died on the 322nd day of the year, the founder of the Illuminati, 322, very special number to the occult, very special number to the Jesuits. But last year, if you recall during the tournament, Elgin Baylor died on March 22nd, Jesuit educated, went to Seattle University. And, and by the way, last year was the 82nd tournament, Seattle's 82. Baylor University won the 82nd tournament, and, and Baylor University in the most pure cipher. I can't spell this morning or type correctly, but Baylor University in the most pure cipher is 82. Elgin Baylor, who played at Seattle University, dies on March 22nd. This year, El Nardo Webster dies on March 22nd. And remember who Baylor beat last year? They beat Gonzaga, right? They beat Gonzaga, the Bulldogs, the other Jesuit school in Washington State. There's only 27 Jesuit universities in all of the U.S. Two of them happen to be in Washington State, named after George Washington, who the first Jesuit university is named after Georgetown. But anyhow, Baylor University won the 82nd tournament. And remember, they won it on April 5th, 201 days before Scott Drew's October 23rd birthday. 201 days before his birthday. And they won it 201 days after what would have been Elgin Baylor's birthday. And then the Baylor great player who had the same birthday as Elgin Baylor died just days after Baylor won the championship, one of their former players, which we talked about last year. But um, again, 201. These are Jesuit rituals. The Jesuit order is 201. Gonzaga, the Jesuit program, is named after Aloysius de Gonzaga, whose name is 201. Um And remember, the championship was in Indianapolis, which is also 201. This year we saw... Georgia beat Alabama in Indianapolis, and the last coach to win it, Vince, what's his name, Vince Dooley? Is that his name? The, the last coach of Georgia to win the championship. Anyway, he was at the game. He won 201 games in his career with Georgia, and, and he coached Georgia for 25 seasons, and the college championship was on the Pope's 25th day of his age, and Pope's 25 in the most peer, and Georgia gave Alabama their 25th loss all-time against Georgia. Alabama picked up their 25th loss against Georgia all-time on the Pope's 25th day of his age with Vince Dooley in attendance who coached Georgia for 25 years. And, you know, we said after the week one games that we thought that's what the championship looked like, that it would be Georgia over Alabama giving Alabama the 25th loss, and that's because of the way they scheduled the week two games 97 days before the Pope's birthday, the 25th prime. And again, just from knowing these simple things, Gematria, prime number relationships, counting days from people's birthday, you can see the ritual. And after week two happened, after the week two games happened, the rituals went just as we expected. You know, 
We, we, we murdered college football all season, but the week two rituals went perfectly expected, and I emphasized so much to my people. I said, you better get your future in for Georgia to beat Alabama. It, it couldn't be any more obvious, and that's exactly what it was. So, you know, the other day, Sweet Lady and I were in a, a restaurant, and they had a TV on, and the NIT was playing, and it was the Xavier St. Bonaventure game, and I told Sweet Lady, I said, oh, Xavier's going to win this one, and sh she always likes to go against me. She goes, no, they're not going to win then. I said, oh, okay. I said, they're going to win. They're the Jesuit school. I said, it's, it's, I said and, and that school's so big right now with Cincinnati just being in the Super Bowl. Well, they end up winning the game, and they won with 84 points, and I laughed, and I said, look, they, they win with 84, and, you know, that's the big Jesuit number. But it, anyway, look at this. This was the 84th NIT, right? Xavier, you know what? Before I even do this Xavier thing real quick, th them winning the, the championship, I, wa I want to do this instead. You remember the Travis Scott concert tragedy? You know, I, I told you guys when it happened, I did a lot of videos on it. I said it was connected to college basketball. And anyhow, The Who had this horrible concert tragedy in history in Cincinnati where Xavier is. And it happened to be on the day of... Fr it happened to be on the anniversary of Francis Xavier's death. So Cincinnati, where Xavier is named after Francis Xavier, had the Who concert tragedy back in 79. That was, you know, the, the, it's this well-remembered thing, but it just so happened to happen on the f anniversary of Francis Xavier's death, right? So look at this. From the Travis Scott concert tragedy of November 5th, Remember, that's the day leaving 56 days left in the year that's important to the Jesuits, right? And the most simple cipher, Society of Jesus, is 191. When you use the rules of numerology, it's 56. The Hood tragedy was in 79. A anyway, from the Travis Scott concert tragedy to the day that they now announce that the Who are going to play in Cincinnati for the first time since this tragedy happens to be 191 days later, right? And Society of Jesus is 191. We, we covered this back when they announced this. So we covered this before the Super Bowl. They, they announced this the week before the Super Bowl. They announced this on the 38th day of the year when death is 38. They also announced this 163 days. Um, or or the, concert, the concert's going to be 163 days after the anniversary of the tragedy, which is the 38th prime. And then they announced it on the 38th day of the year. Again, tribute to death. You might recall the, the news story that, that day on February 7th was the mass shooting in Washington State where a 38-year-old killed a 38-year-old on the 38th day of the year. Death 38. And, and by the way, it was a Kroger shooting 322 days after the last Kroger shooting on 322, March 22nd. Again, just those familiar patterns. It was also 201 days after the anniversary of the death of the founder of Kroger. Okay, anyway. From the Travis Scott concert tragedy to the Who playing in Cincinnati for the first time since their concert tragedy 191 days later, Society of Jesus is 191, Xavier University is 191, the college turned 191 years old at the start of the year. It's 191 years old right now. By the way, that's the 43rd prime and NIT's 43. They just won the NIT. But notice, notice the overlap with Xavier, the Who, and murder. Notice the overlap. 79, 34, 83, you also have the overlap with 38, right? And the first ever NIT tournament was in 38. And when you run the, we just said NIT is 43. When you run the alphabetic order in reverse, it's 38. But anyway, just so much focus on Cincinnati right now. The Bengals in the Super Bowl, the Who returning to town, Xavier University's the special age, and again, Francis Xavier died in history December 3rd. The Who concert tragedy was December 3rd, 79. I mean, how perfect is that? Xavier, The Who, murder. They're all 79. Do you think it was just organic what happened at The Who concert? If you do, I mean, <laughs> I guess the lessons aren't sinking in. This is the Jesuits and how they manipulate the world from you know, real ritualistic death to uh, rig sports. And again, in the sports, they use the technology to ensure the outcomes. So anyhow, this was the 84th NIT tournament. Huge Jesuit number, Jesuits 84. Pope Francis, born on an 84 date numerology. The leader of the Jesuits is called the Superior General, which equals 84. The last Superior General of the Jesuits died at age 84. He died on the 191st day of the current Superior General's age. 
But if you write out the Jesuit order, it's 84. If you write out the Catholic Church, it's 84. If you write out United States of America, it's 84. The United States of America's federal governments had diplomatic relations with the Vatican since 1984. The Jesuit scumbag Anthony Fauci has been the head of NIH since 1984, that George Orwell year. Anyway. Notice Xavier advanced to the championship, beating St. Bonaventure with 84 points. Again, this was the 84th NIT. And then they win it with 80, or excuse me, they win it, and Xavier does not equal 84, but it does equal 83. And that's interesting because the more important college basketball tournament that's going on right now is the 83rd tournament. And funny enough, in the final four, you have North Carolina versus Duke, two North Carolina teams. Tell me who won the final, or who tell me who won the college basketball championship in 1983. It's a it's a very famous highlight. You know, it it was uh, it was against that famous Houston team. The air ball that's caught in the air and laid in to win the game by North Carolina State, the NC State Wolfpack in '83. NC State Wolfpack '83 in the most you know, in our, in our base ciphers, 83. That was 1983. Now here we are in the 83rd tournament, Coach K's last season. It just so happens that you have two North Carolina teams facing each other. But anyway, it's the 83rd men's basketball tournament. So often you'll see a crossover tribute from the NIT to the men's, and that's where I'm telling you that Xavier fit, piece fits in. They're the Jesuit program. They got the 83 connection. They're winning the NIT and its 84th edition. Only makes sense for a Jesuit school to win. While, again, the 83rd men's tournament's taking place. NIT 84th tournament, men's tournament 83rd tournament. And don't forget ever, don't forget who won the, uh, the first ever um, men's tournament in 39. It was the Oregon Webfoots, who are now called the Oregon Ducks. But notice Webfoots, 39. It's been rigged the whole time, you guys. From, from then up to now, the games have been rigged by the same old code. It goes on year after year. But um, the guy who won the game for Xavier, notice Xavier. They got their 23rd win of the season, winning the championship. 83 is the 23rd prime number. Just like how Brady's coming back for his 23rd season. Brady equals 23, born on 83, football 83. Remember uh, on the 83rd day of the year, the Denver Broncos stadium just caught on fire. Football 83, Colorado 83. That just happened to be Peyton Manning's birthday, his 46th birthday when he rode off into the sunset after winning Super Bowl 50, the 46th of the modern era. But anyway, Brady announced he was coming back minutes after they put out the bracket for the 83rd tournament. By the way, Cinderella equals 83, and we got the best Cinderella story ever with St. Peter's Peacocks, not to mention Disney who owns ESPN, who owns these news networks and these networks that show the games. ESPN put out their latest Cinderella movie, uh, 2015, March 13th, seven years to the day of the bracket coming out with the best ever Cinderella story with the Peacocks. But anyway, Xavier wins it in the 84th season, advancing to the championship with 84 points. And then as for the winning score, 73 to 72 added up, 145 points, Catholic 145. 145 more chapters in the Catholic Old Testament than Protestant Old Testament. What's 73? How many books are in the Catholic Bible? What's 73? The 21st prime. This is the 21-22 season. What's Texas A&M go down with? 72. Jesuit order 72. Uh, Again, year after year, perfectly scripted scores, technology used to ensure outcomes, keeping certain balls in the hoop, knocking other balls out. If you know how to play the game, if you know how to shoot the ball, you see some of the unrealistic mechanics on some of these shots where where they come out or where they go, and you're just like, what in the world? But notice also, in light of Xavier, 83, winning their 23rd game of the season to win it all, the man who had the winning shot was John Richard Nunge. That's how you say his name. He goes by Jack Nunge. But notice, he's 23 years old in his full name, 83. It's also 263, the 56th prime, and he had the game winner on the 56th date numerology. Again, that's the Society of Jesus number. And um, again, here he is right here, 23 years old from Lynchburg, Virginia. Big word in the news right now, Lynch. <laughs> if you miss, if you miss, if you missed uh, my work on the anti-lynching bill that uh, Biden just signed. The Emmett Till anti-lynching bill. Emmett Till equals 129. 
Biden signed it 129 days after his birthday, 129 days before Obama's birthday. Biden was 12 years and nine months old when Emmett Till was killed. And um, the word lynch equals 62. He signed it on 29 slash 3, like 293, the 62nd prime, while Loretta Lynch is 62 years old, who was the attorney general when Obama was president and Biden was vice president. Again, from your federal government to your rig sports games, the same Gematria code shines a light on all of it. You can see right through how big of a joke all this stuff is. But um, anyhow, the, the, the game winner by the 23-year-old to give him the 23rd win of the season who has the same Gematria as Xavier, 83. And... Um, The the last time the last time Xavier won the NIT was in fifty eight. Pope Francis equals fifty eight. He's eighty five right now. The reflection he sues Salvatore Salvatore eighty five basketball eighty five again. The first March Madness in eighty five. That was the Catholic school Villanova over the uh, Jesuit school Georgetown. So hey, keep in mind it was uh, the Musketeers thirty sixth game of the season. IHS, the Jesuit acronym, 36, 666, the 36th triangular number. New York equals 666 in the Sumerian cipher, just like basketball game. A lot of 666, 36 rituals with basketball over the years we've documented. And again, it's because it's all Je Jesuit. Um, the leading scorer for, for the Musketeers had 21 points. Uh, again, 84th tournament. They score 73 points, the 21st prime, Jesuit, 84-21, right? Leading score for the Jesuit school in the 84th tournament with 21 points. Dwan Odom chipped in 18. That's IHS, forwards and backwards, you know. Th th this game was also 45 days after the Super Bowl that Cincinnati lost in, perhaps part of the trade-off. They lose that championship. They win this one. See, the IHS is 45 when you run it in reverse. And again, it being Xavier's 190, the school being 191 years old, that's the 43rd prime number. NIT 43 when you run it in reverse, 38. Xavier 38. They win it while the school's 191, the first tournament in 1938. So, you got to be an April Fool to not see how exact all this stuff is again a major moron on youtube a total troll he just said that gematri is total bullshit he just put out a video three days ago it's just like i mean you got to be a fucking idiot to think gematri is total bullshit there's just so many examples that just pile up by the day from sports to news to government that are undeniable i mean you really want to say it's all a coincidence what happened at the uh the who concert and then bringing it back synced up with the travis scott concert on uh, you know i mean you got to be a moron and by the way, if you guys remember the Travis Scott concert, that came out on the anniversary of the Machiavelli album release date. Just take you back down memory lane. Machiavelli album release date. November 5th, 96. Tupac on the cross. Remember this one? Tupac on the cross. November 5th, 96. Machiavelli. That was the... This year was the 25-year anniversary, or this past November 5th was the 25-year anniversary of that album. Of course, Tupac died at 25. And that was the day of the Travis Scott concert tragedy. And what was his stage? If you don't know what his stage was, go back and look at it. It was a massive cross. Again, it's the Jesuits. Society of Jesus, 56. The day leaving 56 days left in the year. Tupac on the cross put out on the important day to the Society of Jesus. You don't think they're running the entertainment world? And again, with that most simple cipher. Machiavelli, 74. Jesus, 74. Cross, 74. Messiah 74, Gospel 74, Parable 74, Rapper 74. Notice how when I write out Jesus, it's 74, and in reverse, it's 61, and, and that's the same with Cross. Notice Tupac is the just the opposite of that, 6174. Moron with uh, half a million subscribers said that you can't compare things that are in, in, in different ciphers. You can only compare the same ciphers. <laughs> A guy who knows nothing about Gematria. It's like, oh, I, I'm sure he's completely right. It must be. It must just be a complete coincidence that when you run the alphabetic order in reverse with numerology, Jesus Christ is 74. It's probably completely unrelated. It's probably completely unrelated that Jesus Christ is 43 when Society of Jesus is 191 with the most simple cipher, the 43rd prime. It's probably unrelated that science came out and said Jesus' crucifixion was on April 3rd 
Go back and look in 2012. They said Jesus' crucifixion was on 4-3. They'd figured it out. April 3rd, the 93rd day of the year, when crucifix is 93, when God's son's 93, when Nazareth's 93, you know. When they say the sun, science says the sun's 93 million miles away, the son of God. Not to mention, you know, December 25th's always been the day the uh, pagans celebrate the birthday of the solar man, 93. It's probably all unrelated. Jamacha is probably total bullshit as people continue to uh, pad their pockets, especially on Thursday nights. But anyway, congrats to the winners tonight, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 Eastern. We will go over the March Madness Tournament. If you can't watch it then, you can always watch it anytime tomorrow before the game. Going to do the Final Four. And I'm just going to be honest, I I think the Final Four is real hairy. We went perfect in the Elite Eight. We've dominated the tournament. But um, I am having trouble narrowing down what the championship is. I know a lot of people think it's in the bag for Duke. It very well could be. It could be a Hollywood script for Coach K. But we're going to talk about some red flags and why we might want to think twice about that because there's some familiar patterns on the board if it's not the Coach K script and um, might be helpful for you to listen to if you're thinking about going out and betting the house on Duke. Um, Again, we've already gone through the majority of the tournament. My people in my community have made a ton on it. We've dominated the tournament again as we've done year after year. But I got to admit, this this Final Four is a bit hairy. So we'll also be back to do... uh, The Masters next week, three years running. We've nailed the winner of the Masters from the beginning. Last year, the winner had 40 to 1 odds. The year before that, it was, um, what's his name? Was it Justin Thomas two years ago? I always forget forget the golfer's name, but we had him dead on. It was a huge Jesuit ritual. I think he paid 12 to 1, and it was the same thing the year before that. It was Tiger Woods with about 12, 15 to 1 odds. But last year was a nice 40 to 1 winner. And um, again, Gematria. Show me anyone else in the world that's nailed the Masters three years in a row. And we've nailed a lot of golf tournaments over the years. It's not, it's not just the Masters the last three years. And, again, we got Bali go backwards. Not over there in the U.K., but in, in Ireland. I always thought that they were all part of the same thing. But what do I know? Anyway, Bali go backwards. He's been studying, and now he runs his own Patreon, and he nails golf tournaments week after week. He, he's expanded into other sports. You know, he's helping his people win money. A- again, for all the people who realize that Gematria is not bullshit, they're padding their pockets. For all the people who continue to say it's bullshit and suffer from cognitive dissonance, all you guys are doing is hurting yourselves. Well, maybe in a way you're insulating us because, again, if all of you caught on, if all of you had the brains to catch on, they'd have to switch up the way they script the games. Couldn't just let the casinos go broke. But, um, again, congrats to the winners. More evidence the Jesuits run the show. More evidence of what I was talking about with the focus on Cincinnati and and Xavier and and the upcoming Who concert and what they did with the Cincinnati Bengals. Again, all all things we've been talking about in recent times. So, And and for for the troll Simon Dan, I'll, I'll put this out there for you since you're British, buddy. If you can prove that Gematria's guffin beans, as he said, he said it's all just bullshit, it's guffin beans. Literally, here's my April Fool's Day offer to you, and I will pay up. If you can prove that Gematria is just bullshit and, and, and none of it means anything, I will literally figure out a way to buy you a ticket and fly you out to watch the Who concert in Cincinnati, and I'll give you $10,000. I'll do all that for you. And again, I'm not worried about it because you're not going to prove it. You're not going to prove it false. It's impossible. Again, if you guys don't know who this troll is, he sits there and makes fun of flat earthers, which is an easy thing to do. He thought he could do the same thing with Gematria. Again, not the same thing. Flat earth is a religion based in beliefs that has zero proof behind it. Gematria is something where the proof stacks by the day, you know? How do you like? Uh, how how do you guys like them uh, settling the new overtime rule for the NFL? Forty four days after the Super Bowl, did you guys catch that one? Remember when we uh, called the first ever overtime? We we called that first ever overtime in the Super Bowl. That paid nice odds. I I did think the Super Bowl had a chance to go to overtime this year on the forty fourth day of the year. It looked like it was gonna happen, and then it didn't. But you know what? It's okay. We still hit with Odell Beckham scoring the first touchdown at nine to one odds. Trolls keep leaving comments. It was an easy pick for Odell Beckham to score a touchdown. But was it an easy pick for him to score the first touchdown of the game? That's where the odds were. 9-1. to one. How did we know that? Gematria. Odell Beckham Jr. 56 in the most pure. Born on the day, leaving 56 days left in the year. Traded to the Rams on his 29th birthday. The Rams started in Cleveland, went to L.A., 
in any other year, I would have told people that that was the Super Bowl clue. I just, I really didn't think this year that the NFL was going to do it two years in a row, have the hosting team win the Super Bowl. But again, I mean, that's just the way they mock the fans. It never happened until Super Bowl 55. And, and not to mention, again, we nailed it with 55. We said why the Bucks would beat the Chiefs before the season even began. Just didn't think they'd do the same thing two years in a row, but they fooled me with that one. So anyway, anyway. Congrats to the winners. We'll leave it there for now. Again, I'm not doing a whole lot of videos right now. I am working hard on the book. Yesterday was very productive. And um, again, pay attention to what we're teaching over here. Jesuits, Gematria, seeing through the script. All day, every day. <laughs> by the way, the other thing you should look into by side sports is you should look at uh, that little meeting they had over there in the Middle East. I, I never heard the word New World Order used so many times, you guys. If you missed it, world governments got together yesterday in the Middle East and they talked about how very soon there's going to be a big conversion. Some countries are already doing it and the U.S. is, you know, in line. But there's going to be a conversion to a new digital dollar. And like they talked about with the digital dollars, governments will be able to keep track of of practically every penny spent by every person. And just think what that could mean. There, there's not going to be any more getting away with cheating on your taxes, you know. And, and there could be a whole new list of, uh, you know, reasons for the government to come and knock on your door and audit you and maybe throw you in a cage. So remember, all of you guys who all you care about are sports and, and rig sports, you better pay attention to what's taking place in the world. You know, my, my book that's been out for almost two years now la laid out where all this was going and how all this stuff was right around the corner. So, yeah, look, look into the uh, little world government summit. You, you'll be you'll be amazed at how everybody gets on the stage and says the new. Are you ready for the new world order? The new world order is pretty much here. We're about to enter the new world order. <laughs> it's just like, oh, my God. Anyway, anyway, remember, New World Order equals the Jesuit Order. Don't forget that either. So, anyway. Oh, oh, oh I almost forgot one more thing. I almost forgot one more thing. In light of uh, Xavier being 191 years old, and again, that being the 43rd prime and then winning this NIT, look at the coach, Sean Edward Miller. His birthday is November 17th, the day Young Dolph got shot. Remember, Young Dolph's death was connected to the basketball season. They put out his cause of death on the first day of the March Madness tournament, 118 days later when March Madness is 118. But notice, from his birthday to him winning the championship, 19 weeks and one day later, 191. So They couldn't have scripted it any better. They couldn't have scripted it any better. And... Um, We'll leave it there for now. Don't forget to hit the like on the way out of here. Low level of likes for the knowledge I just dropped. It just it's sad how it's sad how hard it is for people to hit the like button. I, I just gave you knowledge that can pad your pocket every week. You guys can't even hit the like. I, I see the dumbest fucking videos on YouTube that have thousands of likes, and I'm just like, I, I know YouTube does take away my views and likes, but God, all you guys who can't hit the like button, it's like, man, I just got on here and spent time out of my day. I don't get anything out of this. And you can't even hit the damn like button? Sad. Anyway, we'll be on Patreon tonight. Just like it says down below, the link's in the description, patreon.com, Zachary K. Hubbard, if you want to join us for the Final Four discussion. Again, the way Patreon works is uh, you, you, can sign, you can sign up so it keeps you renewed each month, or you can just sign up for one month. But if you sign up for today, you're on there for the whole month. And um, again, I'm, I'm, I haven't been decoding sports daily for a long time now. You know, been too busy doing other stuff, working on books and keeping up with all the other shit I do. But um, I, I do drop sports clues throughout the month. We'll, we'll talk about the tournament. We'll see if we can hit the Masters four years in a row. And uh, again, you pay the, the one month subscription, you get all the content I put out for the month. And very likely in, in the days ahead, I, I will put up the full ber version of my new book. You'll see it before anyone else. Again, I got to send it off to Book Baby, and they go through the whole publishing thing. And then when that's done, people can actually get the physical copy of the book. But when I'm done with it, I am going to put it on Patreon as an exclusive, as an ebook. So look for that as well. I am near the end of writing or finishing my third book, and uh, that's what that's on the plate for the rest of the day. So again, congrats to the winners. 
another successful Thursday. I, I might have to start calling it 46 Thursday since we're getting into that part of the season where it's 46s. But remember, this works for every sport, you guys. College and pro, all the sports. Before long, it'll be baseball season. And, you know, it'll be a, a month, month and a half, couple months into baseball, two and a half months in. You'll see on the Thursdays, people are coming along. You can pick up that 35th win. But it'll even start at the beginning of the year because you'll have to pay attention to starting pitchers. If a starting pitcher is tossing on a Thursday and he can pick up his 35th career win, guess what? You know, that's the good bet. So in baseball, since it's about to get underway, and we will be talking about the, the upcoming baseball season as well. I already put out, I already put out my futures for baseball a long time ago. I, I got a good hunch on baseball this year. But... Um, Again, baseball, you got two win categories to look at. Team wins. Well, actually, there's always three now that I think about it. You get you got the wins for the season, the win-loss record for the season. You got the win-loss head-to-head record for most teams, where in most cases it's well beyond 35 wins or losses because baseball teams play each other so much, unless it's an interleague play game. That's, that's where you might find a 35 Thursday as an interleague play game where teams haven't played each other that much because interleague play is a newer thing in recent years. But pitchers, you got to keep an eye on those pitchers. But you'll see, you learn this knowledge, you pay attention on Thursdays, you see how these numbers just stack up week after week after week. And, and yesterday was one of those flawless Thursdays, and they do happen, and, and those are the days where people put a lot of money in their pocket. And um, by the way, since there's a certain gentleman out there who's listening, um, I heard through the grapevine your, your sweet lady said she was going to leave you if you drove out to Oklahoma City. You, you don't need to come out to Oklahoma City um, and, and ruin your relationship. It, it's not that big of a deal. You know, if your relationship's important to you, don't do that. You know, I, I plan in the future to be uh, in closer proximity to other people. And um, another gentleman said, well, he was planning on going with him, and now he's not going, so now he's not sure he can go. And, and for you as well, it's okay if you don't come. It's, it's, it's just fine, but... Um, that there are plenty of people who are going to be there. So, anyhow, Oklahoma City, April nineteenth, also not too far off. And you know, don't don't lose your sweet lady over it. Or if you're a lady going out there and your man saying he's going to leave you, same thing. I haven't heard about that scenario yet, but uh, anyhow, don't ruin the things that are good in your life. So, we'll leave it there for now, True Seeker. Again, congrats to the winners. Patreon link in the description, and until next time.